Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. And for those who are watching here this week live, this happy holidays to you. This is a beautiful 1969 Cadillac Fleetwood Brougham. And this is not a customer's car. This is my new acquisition. This is the Wizard Mobile. This is going to be something, a little project for me. I don't really have to do a whole lot to it. It's really in pretty good shape. I got it for a good price and it's going to be my daily driver. Well, this is definitely a gangster's car. Definitely looks like something like a mobster would drive and that's fine with me because I like that. It looks cool. This car has the venerable 472 V8. It also has a TH400 transmission and arguably there's some of the best powertrain units that General Motors ever made. During the 1969 year I think there was a little over 17,000 of the Fleetwood Broughams made. There's uh, various different models, Eldorado and Sedan DeVille, but this one's a Fleetwood Brougham. This thing is very long. It's like a land, you talk about land yachts, this thing's like a land Titanic. 228.5 inches long, that equates to about 19 feet long. No, it will not fit in my garage. It's extremely huge. You'll see in a minute when we have it on the list, it looks like a, I don't know, it looks like a flying saucer hanging out in the air. It's huge. I'm going to go over some tips to what you look for when you're looking at a vintage car, things that you want to keep an eye out for. We're going to go ahead and put it on the lift and start from the bottom and work our way up. There's lots of things I still need to do to this car yet. I've only had it a week. I think the finished product is going to be very nice. As you can see, this thing's huge. I think the only model that was bigger in this year was the Fleetwood 75 series limo, which has quite, got quite a bit more length to it. But even as this is with the Fleetwood Brougham, it's like two modern cars length, it's huge. So the first thing we're gonna do is start underneath and I'll work from front to back and then we'll work our way up. So when you go to look at a car and you're thinking about purchasing it, obviously you're not going to have a lift to look at, but I'm going to use the lift and have it up in the air to point to some very important areas that you can look at to get a kind of a quick inspection of whether or not you're going to want to buy the vehicle. First thing, you, the radiator is right in this area on most cars. It's called the, the header piece for the radiator. You want to check to make sure it's dry there. If the radiator is leaking or any issues there, it's all going to be wet. Antifreeze. And you also, also you can, something you can see really easily is the engine oil pan. This one's kind of got age and crust on it, but it's not coated in oil. Another thing you want to look is if you can look at the brakes, see if there's anything leaking there, possible issues with brake leaks. Make sure there's no broken suspension components. Check the tire tread. A lot of things can be checked just right in this area, right in through here. But uh, we're going to go ahead and move back towards the... Uh, the middle of the car. I'll show you some more things there. When the vehicle's on the ground, you can look, get, get down on the ground and look underneath. You want to look at the transmission pan. This one's coated in, in oil. The pan gasket's leaking. I'm going to have to re repair that. I'll probably put a filter and just go ahead and surface it. And there's also, I can, I've traced it back to the valve cover gaskets. This one's leaking oil down the uh, torque converter cover. But you want to check to see that anything's wet there, it's obviously going to be a leak. And then the next question is where is it coming from? If you see a leak along here, you want to go up above and look at the valve covers and see if it's dripping down the back or is it a rear main seal leak or... But the main thing is, the question is, things wet under here. Another thing you can look at is this, these floor pans underneath the driver and passenger. You can get a flashlight and shine it in here and see is there any rust holes, is there been repairs, believe it or not, using an old stop sign or a license plate or something crazy. You, you would be surprised some of the crazy things people try to hide. But I just check the underneath right here and see if there's any rotting or... I can see the exhaust on this one's been replaced. It probably was rusted and fell off or who knows what. We'll go ahead and move to the rear of the vehicle and show you some things there. 
Okay, I noticed when I drove this thing home it had a vibration and oscillation and from experience I know it's the drive shaft. On these long Cadillacs like this they're going to have these cardan joints and this one actually has double cardan joints. It has two of them, one up front, one in the back. If the, any of the U-joints are slightly off, it misses with, messes with the alignment and things aren't directly straight while it's turning and it, it'll be out of whack or out of balance. I'm going to pull this off and take it to a driveline shop they can rebuild it faster and cheaper than I can mess. I would rather not even spend the time on it. I'm going to let them do it. So uh, that's the. Uh, you want to check the U joints. If you can uh, reach from back behind and just wiggle it, twist it, see if there's anything going on with those. And while you're looking under the car, you can look at the rear floor pans, see if there's any stop signs or license plates or barn metal. You'd be surprised at stuff. Like I said, what's under there. But these. This is one of the selling points for me in the car. I can fix mechanic problems. I can fix all these things, but I'm not, not, I'm not a body guy. I don't do body panels and welding and stuff. And this, the body on this car is in excellent shape. The floor pans are perfect. No rust, no holes, nothing's broken that way. I do notice here that the pinion seal was leaking. I'm gonna have to address that. And as you can see, the exhaust is being hung by baling wire. It looks like the little rubber mount broke. I'll be probably just running new exhaust on this thing. And next we'll move to the very, very back of the car. This has taken four movements to get to the back of the car. That just shows how long this crazy thing is. The next thing you want to look is from whatever side you're looking under, look across to the other side, the back side of the, the brakes. These have drums in the back but discs in the front. Check to make sure there's not fluid leaking out of there. It's all wet, like a wheel cylinder has gone out or a wheel seal has gone out. That's going to give you an indication that something's going on there. As you can see, this has coilover shocks. And when you see that on these cars, you know the air suspension has failed. I don't have a problem with this. I probably would just leave it like it is because it sits perfectly. And I'm not, there's nothing going to break, nothing going to mess, mess up on me. I can just drive it. It's going to be a daily driver, so. Someday I may put it back, put the air suspension back together and get it all going again, but right now this works great for me. Another thing that you can notice if it's set for a long time, a brand new fuel tank. There's a reason for that. It probably set for a long time and got the fuel went bad and just destroyed the inside of it. So I drove this thing all the way home for two and a half, three hours almost, and it didn't miss a hitch, so it did great. But as you can see, this has been replaced. Another thing to keep in mind, this car is 50 years old. And unless it's been in sitting in a barn for the whole time, it's not just been one or two mechanics work on it. You've had probably 50 sets of hands on this car over 50 years. If it had to have service once a year for 50 years, that's 50 mechanics. So you need to start looking. Some, there's been things changed. There's been things replaced. The question is, what are they? You have to discover that after you buy it most of the time, unless you're going to take it to a shop and have a pre-purchase inspection done. I was pretty much not fearful of anything that could go wrong on this. It's not like it's a Bentley or something crazy. It's an old 69 Cadillac, so I actually think I did pretty good on it. So anyways, we're going to lower it down and look at some body panels, look at body work. One of the places you want to check for us is when this, where this trim molding meets the body. You want to look along there. I think this has been repainted before. It's a decent paint job. It's not the best, but I think it'll clean up all right. Check for a rust here, or you can even get a magnet, and you can go along, and if you have a place that it doesn't stick anymore, that could be Bondo or body filler or something going on there. Um, you can also kind of tap and go along, and if it doesn't, you get to a spot that doesn't sound metallic, like a hollow ma metal sound, now it sounds like a uh, plastic thump. It could be body filler there. But just check along here for bubbles, uh, rust, basically like cancer rust. I've seen whole pieces missing out of some of these in the back. Also, this has fender skirts. Those like to get rust holes right about and around in here. Uh, just check along there and make sure it's not rusted out. The next place you want to check is along where this Landau top mounts actually meets with the body. Right along through here. Water likes to get on the back windows on these and on any, it could be a Lincoln, it could be a Chrysler, Newport, whatever. Water likes to get in these and 
destroy this whole area. And someday I'll have this redone. I think that there's little bits of rust or I don't know. I think that's what that is. It doesn't, doesn't seem that way, but especially along here. Make sure that's not rotted out. Next, we're going to move to the trunk back here. That's a nice feature that I didn't expect to see on a 69 car as an opener in the glove box for the trunk. These are some of the service records this vehicle actually has all the way back till new. Uh, some, somebody in the past spilled oil or something all over the papers, but I, they're still legible. At least they're there. I can verify dates when things were replaced, repaired, all kinds of interesting stuff in the owner's manual. It's kind of cool. We're going to go ahead and show you some things to check here in the trunk. So if you're, look, if you're looking at a dealer lot or even a private seller, you want to make him get nervous and ants in his pants, here's a trick that you can do to start really pushing his butt and do this. On an old car, this very likely will just be rusted completely out. There is some rust in here. I believe there's been some condensation or maybe even a small leak on this weather stripping. I can deal with that, but I've opened, pulled carpet back on some of these and you can see grass below. There's nothing there. I mean, it's just really bad, but this one, the metal's good in the back and I'm very pleased about that. So that's definitely a place you can check for rust and rot is in the trunk. So many times on these old cars, the trunk's gone. I mean, I used to have a 67 Fleetwood Broham, just a couple years older than this. You could stand on the ground in the trunk. There was nothing there. It was just kind of scary, but not the case on this one, luckily. So we're going to move around to further forward on the body. So as you're going along, you want to open the door, open all the doors. If it's two door, four door, whatever, open all of them. Check the door jams. See if there's any rust, rot right down in here. Make sure there's no holes, brown rust. And you can also do a comparison. Like this one's had a paint job and it doesn't exactly match the door jam. So I can tell it's been repainted. That's some data that you can use as a when you're negotiating a price. I've opened door jams to some of these old cars. And again, you could put your fist in there. There's just a hole. That's not so on any of the door jams on this car. On these uh, DeVilles and Fleetwoods of this year, Dirt likes to get behind the front fenders under the word Fleetwood or down here in the, like by the rockers and there'll be huge rust bubbles down. If you, if you remove this uh, chrome strip, you'd be surprised what you'd find. Luckily on this car, it's solid. So I got lucky on that on this one. They're usually just completely rotted out. Check along this whole chrome strip along both sides. Make sure there's no rust bubbles or Bondo work or anything like that. So, and on the front, there's not a whole lot of weird tricks or anything for the body. Just make sure it's not been wrecked. Make sure the grill is in good shape. The headlights are straight. They're not hanging or something's broke on them. But those are some of the telltale areas for rust on these. The next thing we're going to do is look in the interior. That's another area that I'm not good at. I'm not an upholstery guy. I can fix all kinds of stuff. I'm going to buy a car. I want the interior and the body to be decent. Um, this car. 96,000 miles on it and the interior is immaculate. It's got foot rests. The carpet's nice. We've seen that the, f the floor pans are all intact and solid when we were underneath the car. The rear deck is not rusted or rotted out. The headliner is not sagging or torn or ripped. All these things I'm mentioning are expensive to fix. This thing is truly a leather couch on wheels. It, it really is. It's so comfortable to drive. Another thing you want to check when you're looking at the interior is all the power features, power locks, power windows, power seats. All those things work on this car. Another thing about these older Cadillacs, especially the Fleetwoods, is they don't have pieces of plastic with printed wood grain on them. It's real wood. These, you can see the veneer here. I need to have re that, but it's real wood. 
all four doors are real wood. That's pretty cool. Pretty neat feature about these old Cadillac. Almost Rolls Royce-ish. Being the case that that's real wood, you want to make sure that's in good shape too. Amazingly, for this old of a car, it has a lot of cool features. One of the things is cruise control, and it's kind of an old style cruise control. It's kind of like the price is right over here. It's this little wheel. When you're on the highway, you turn on your cruise control, hit auto, and you actually turn the wheel to what speed you want. Then you mash the gas, floor it until you get up to that speed and it takes over and it and engages and there's your cruise control. It, this one, it works. That's one of the things on these old Cadillacs. They have old mechanical cruise control and I'll show you when we're under the hood. You wanna make sure that works. You're not just gonna go to AutoZone and buy some parts for that. The same type of a wheel down here for the climate control and it also all works. The AC doesn't work on this car. I'll have to repair the compressor. I uh, tested all the operations and everything works great. So this has telescope, steering wheel, tilt. Make sure all that stuff works good. Uh, this one's the clock's dead. I'll have to take that apart and see if I can repair it. It's not a huge deal, but it'd be nice if it was working. And your wipers are over here on the left. And again, check your horn. On these, it's called rim blow. It has a rim. This one's in bad shape. I'll have to either have it reconditioned or just order a new one, which is very expensive. But you actually push on the rim, and it would honk the horn. And as you can see, that's all deteriorated on here. I can wrap it in leather. It would look decent. And also on the dash, this one's in perfect shape. No cracks. Make sure it's not cracked through and you can see yellow insulation underneath. That looks really bad. If you got a nice one and it's in good shape, don't go testing it and pushing on it because then you will crack it. It's, it's brittle. It's old. If it's in good shape, don't touch it. Don't mess with it. When you get home, you can put some UV protectant or something of your choice and take care of it, but don't go pushing on it. Just leave it alone. That's pretty much it for the interior. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is take a look under the hood and show you a few things to check out. And guess what? On this car, we're going to open the hood just like a 1995 Dodge Viper. There's no hood latch or anything to pull under the dash. You just reach under the grill and open it. I got my handy dandy Milwaukee light that they sent me up here and I think I had to stretch it to its limits to, to fit it on this hood. But I'm going to start from the front here and work my way back. Things to, to check. You're not going to be able to check every bolt and everything. They're going to have their seller standing there they're not going to have patience for that but you want to just hey, take a quick glance this one's got some screen over it and i've come across that on many many old cars they'd put that there it's like window screen to keep bugs and birds and whatever out of the out of their condenser i'd probably just leave it it's a good idea check the battery make sure see how old it is make sure the terminals this one i'm going to replace the terminals they look pretty they look pretty cruddy Whenever you're looking at a car to buy, you want to have a little flashlight with you, a pin light or something. Look along the edges of the radiator to see if it's stained green or look for any wet areas where it's leaking antifreeze. Uh, you could look at the condenser, see if there's any oil, wet spots where there might be a hole. Um, go along and check your hoses. As you can see, there's no belt on the compressor on this one, and it's because it's locked up. I'm going to have to repair that and replace it. That's an easy fix for me. That's no, that's a cinch. That's no problem. Check your belts. Check your hoses. Check fluids. Check your power steering. Check your engine oil. You don't want to go take it on a road test and it doesn't hardly have any oil in it. Make sure there's not any huge leaks or anything. Check all along the sides of the motor. These valve covers are going to have to come off as I showed you underneath. The gaskets are leaking down the back. Again, that's not a very big deal. It's very easy to change those out. This right here is our cruise control. It's mechanical. It does have some electronic portions to it, but these, when they go bad, they're kind of difficult to get those going again. You might find a good used one on eBay or some. I don't know that they're rebuildable. They might be. I've never heard of it. But you got your speedometer cable from your transmission to this unit and from this unit to the gauge cluster. And then it uses actual mechanical motions to register speed and make adjustments to this arm. And that adjusts your throttle. It's crazy that today they can uh, do cruise control with a tronic throttle body with a little motor that's this big around. It's like the size of a 
video game controller or something. This big tube shaped thing, this is a vacuum operated air compressor. This w is what would have ran the air suspension if it was operational. I'll probably take it off and then when I decide to put it back to original, rebuild it and run new lines and put air, the air shocks in the back. But for now, I'll we'll just leave it alone. I'm going to go through it and tune it up and make sure it's in good shape. Here's your brake master cylinder. Make sure there's no lines missing. It's not uncommon for the rear brakes to maybe be leaking and the seller will just block off the rear or pinch the line. I've seen that before, crazy stuff. Make sure both lines are there. You can take the cap off, make sure that one of the front or rear reservoirs is not extremely low. You can also check your radiator through the, through the fan here. You can kind of take a peek and look around and see if there's any hole, pinholes, or in the past there might have been a repair job where they soldered it or something. You can get an idea where the fan's gone bad and it went into the radiator, you can see swirls. Check in there and make sure there's no radiator damage. Well, that didn't sound like a Rolls Royce hood, but it didn't sound like a 10 can Toyota either. It sounded pretty good to me. There's not many cars these days that you go to the front and it's all metal. That's kind of a rarity these days. This is a really cool car and collectively it's in a very it's in very good shape it's it's sturdy it's it's not rusted through it's not rotted out it's a, it's got good bones i'm going to take time and go through it get it running actually it runs good i'm going to get it running better i should say i drove it all the way from kansas city like i said no problems no overheats it just cruised on down the highway it just needs some love and attention and uh, i think it's going to be a really cool car you don't see much of these on the road anymore really excited to make it my daily driver so anyways uh, if you see any tools in any of the videos I have you're interested in buying them check my Amazon affiliates page I've got lots of tools listed for you guys uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button hit the little bell and again thanks for watching